Hey there, it's Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be another uh, vlog, officially part of Slithy Vlogs. Getting back to that series, this is number 19. And uh, as usual, this is going to be a fairly off-the-cuff, lightly edited and unscripted look at some of the things that I have uh, going on at my channel and with some of the games that I'm developing. Now, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may be familiar with a game that I've been working on for the Commander X-16 called Cavi's Quest. And uh, Cavi is just a... Uh, more of a formal name for a guinea pig, uh, which you know a lot of people <laughs> enjoy to have as pets. Uh, some people eat them, <laughs> but generally, in the United States at least, uh, they are our pets. And uh, and of course, I have uh, my own guinea pigs, uh, although they are more for my kids. And uh, one of them was named Madeline. And unfortunately, Madeline passed away yesterday. But uh, you can see this uh, picture right here. This is my own 8-bit rendering of Madeline. And she has uh, a bit of a featured part in the game Cavi's Quest as uh, one of the uh, uh, protagonists, uh, Penelope, named after another one of my guinea pigs, who thankfully is still with us, is, is sort of an antagonist, uh, sort of a, a bully that lives with her. And, of course, these were all, all based on our, our actual guinea pigs. And uh, Madeline's not going to be immortalized in this game, which uh, I haven't been doing a lot of work on lately, but we'll be seeing some more of this uh, as time goes on, and especially as the Commander X-16 platform becomes closer to fruition and as the actual uh, kernel and the uh, emulator and... All, all the different uh, parts of the tool chain start to mature more, I'll be able to uh, get this game finished, and, and you'll be seeing more about that. Unfortunately, I won't have Madeline anymore as a live model for her, but uh, I never intended for her character to live beyond this uh, very first scene introduction, and, and I'll, I'll be uh, linking videos. In fact, look up right now. There it is. There's a, a video that, that features this uh, opening scene between Penelope and uh, Madeline and gives you a, a little bit of an insight as to, to where that game starts and where it's going. But the question is now, uh, I, I'm not a professional artist by any means, but I did create this uh, piece of uh, 16 color, 320 by 200 artwork. And so how did I do that uh, based on a life model? And, you know, it's, it's pixel art, right? But it, it's, a, it's a bit more sophisticated than that. What I'm doing in this game is I'm using uh, the XCI game engine that I developed for uh, the Commander X-16. That stands for Extremely Compact Interpreter. And it's based on the Sierra X, uh, SCI game engine, uh, or also uh, with a, a bit of a shout out to, to LucasArts Scum engine. But to basically come up with those kinds of games. And I have a whole series, and that'll also be linked in here, a whole series on how to develop games for uh, this XCI game engine. And, and so uh, I've made that game engine open source, and I've been using all open source tools to create the uh, artwork for it. And so what I did is here, here's an actual picture of Madeline. I was <laughs> holding her in my hand just to, I wanted to capture her face. And so what I did was take this picture and just uh, paste it into Krita. And here in Krita, it's a... Uh, a, a nice uh, drawing tool that is uh, open source. It's actually uh, part of the, the KDE package. I also use KDN Live for uh, editing all of my videos. So I, I, I really try to use as many open source tools as possible. So here with Krita, I could just uh, set up a canvas that was 320 by 200. And so you can see already the, the picture of Madeline is, uh, is fairly pixelated. So what I did was start creating some layers that would uh, just help uh, cover up <laughs> all of this and, and start to replace her with an 8-bit version of herself. Um, and you can see here I've got a whole bunch of layers, so I'll sort of bring these in one by one so you can see. So yeah, I just had a, a purple background. Now, of course, I am targeting a 16-color uh, palette, but... 
Uh, and of course, one of those colors has to be black because of X16 reasons. So it, I really only have uh, 15 colors beyond that black to work with. So I, I try to make these pictures have some uh, flat edges uh, and, and then in cases where I have something that is a lot of one color, like a brown guinea pig, I want to make sure I have a few shades of brown to work with out of that palette. So nice uh, flat purple background and then some detail in the cage where we have the bedding and the walls and then the cage bars themselves. Uh, and so, yeah, we're starting to build sort of the background of uh, what's happening here. And then what I was able to do is sort of uh, overwrite her face with this uh, sort of a base coat, if you will, of paint. Now, of course, this is a, a whole lot of strokes in there, but I was able to go in and actually using a uh, stylus, because I have a, a touchscreen laptop that I use and um, is able to sort of just draw over her face. But instead of being held in a hand maker so that she's more sort of standing in this sort of quasi upright way that guinea pigs stand where they have their front legs uh, pushed down and, and pushing their body up to, to look up at something. <laughs> so that was the that was the first bit that I had to do. And we can see here, I'll, I'll just sort of go up one layer at a time. And then I, I started filling in uh, the details. Now you can see the the details, if I take out sort of that uh, background coat, you can see they are over the, uh, over all of the little edges of the original photograph. So I was able to uh, bring in this uh, fur and uh, start to draw in while still uh, con you know keeping everything tight to the original image and, and make sure that everything's sort of blending in with this background so I, I i'm pretty sure i probably created this layer first sort of sketched out and then fill in sort of behind it which is the nice thing of course with computer graphics is that you don't have to start with a base coat and build on top of it you can do the build on top bits first and then sort of backfill a base coat which is kind of nice and as we're going up here in the layers i uh, have some uh, hay in fact it includes like the different colors of hay coming in in different layers some of the detail of the bedding and then the uh, actual hay rack. And you can see then here I can take out the sort of the hay that's inside it. And you see I could just build out that hay rack and then start filling it in with hay behind it so that then the, the hay rack still shows up uh, on top of the hay. And then here I took this generic online guinea pig because I didn't have a uh, a good picture of Winifred, the uh, other guinea pig that's in this picture, uh, who's a, an, another uh, real life guinea pig that that we own, and instead I, I took this sort of clip art guinea pig and it's like, all right, well I'll sort of make her into Winifred, and Winifred is mostly black, just with like sort of a a reddish brown belly, so I, I started with this guinea pig, and this guinea pig was uh, already looks like it's munching. So I was able, again, sort of uh, do a little uh, detail around, ca capture the uh, edges of the piggy, and then go back and backfill. And then with that backfill, also adding in some of the details, some of these light brown details. And then I could uh, take away that uh, image there, just like I can also take away the uh, real image of... Uh, of uh, Winifred there and there's pretty much our uh, our image so we can see there that's that's what it looks like but here in Krita what I'm able to do is export that to um, here I'm gonna just put this right on my desktop and instead of a Krita I can make it a, uh, a PNG file so that it'll be a uh, pixel perfect and I can save that there. 
Now, this is a full uh, RGB uh, palette. It, it does, it's not indexed yet, but I can use GIMP for that. Of course, another open source tool. So if I open up uh, that uh, GIMP in GIMP here, this level one, now I can see here it is RGB color. Let me uh, let me make this bigger. So then we want to change the color mode to indexed, which we can then say we're going to do 16 colors. And one of them is going to be black because we've got those eyes and we've got uh, Winifred herself who's uh, pretty much all black. And, and so we can expect to get black and then 15 other colors. And we, of course, do no... Uh, sort of dithering and we get this nice flat 16 color version we, we lose a little bit of color depth but you know that's okay so we take this uh, png file and we can still save it as that so we keep the index information but then we can go and save that as a raw bitmap file including a uh, palette file so if we go back to the desktop we can see that now we have that uh, the PNG, we have the bitmap, and we have this uh, palette file that all can be uh, imported into the XCI game engine, and we'll be able to use that palette information for that uh, bitmap when we render it. Yeah, so that's it. That's all I had for this video. I, I hope that was uh, somewhat interesting to see kind of how 8-bit painting can work and how the Commander X16 allows you to do some stuff like that, especially when you use the XCI game engine. So I've got all the information for all of this uh, on my channel, uh, all the tutorial of uh, how to build a game for XCI and how to do some programming, uh, especially for rendering bitmaps with the Commander X16. All, all those series are back there on my channel, so go back and check them out. And if, if you wanna see what's coming out next on my channel, including a continuation of uh, my uh, ZX Spectrum uh, Z80 assembly series, that's uh, all coming up and if you want to get that uh, before anybody else, the best way to do that is to come join our Patreon community. And uh, these folks that you see right here can see all of those videos ad-free as soon as I upload them and before the rest of the general public. And they can provide their feedback. And, and that's the, the really the big benefit, uh, not just for them, but for me, uh, beyond the money that uh, comes in. And you can pledge as little as a dollar a month and get in this community and, and really become one of the big contributors uh, to this channel and help it grow and improve. So I, I hope you uh, come join us over there. Uh, but otherwise, please uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, like this video, and uh, I hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.